Five years ago, Thanos erased half of the population of the universe. But the people of this planet brought everyone back with a snap of a finger. The sudden return of the population provided the necessary energy for the emergence to begin. How long do we have? Seven days. We're Eternals. We came here 7,000 years ago to protect humans from the Deviants. Why didn't you guys help fight Thanos? Or any war, or all the other terrible things throughout history? We were instructed not to interfere in any human conflicts unless Deviants are involved. By who? We need to find the others. I haven't seen some of them for centuries. Hi. Hello. This is what the end of the world looks like. At least we have front row seats. You know what's never saved the planet? Your sarcasm. We have loved these people since the day we arrived. When you love something, you protect it. I bet you've built the perfect safe house. Well, what's this even made of? Vibranium? Forklift? I keep A. B. N. It's headphones, Neil! What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Headphones Neil Reviews. I'm your host as always, Headphones Neil, finally bringing you my review for the 2021 film The Eternals. So, I, like I said, I finally had a chance to watch the film and to get things out of the way right off the bat, I did quite enjoy the film. It the whole two and a half hours or so went by pretty quickly except for a few random slow scenes but in general I enjoyed the film a lot more than I expected to especially with the mixed reviews that were coming out about um, how good or bad it is how it fits into the MCU and all of that sort of stuff so with that being said um, watching the film it felt a lot like a mix between 2001 A Space Odyssey and The Matrix in that we start the film learning about how the celestials create and maintain the universe and then the eternals are sent out to um, cultivate life and grow them and progress uh, society over the years and that was only a partial revelation of the story with the main revelation being that the eternals are actually robot basically a super advanced um android robots that are imbued with these special powers to um, help progress society over the years and cultivate human life so that eventually they can use the energy of those beings to create new celestials which was an interesting revelation in that this is we are in that this actually quite reminded me of <clears throat> the matrix in how the machines use uh, human energy to create energy so that the machines can grow and survive and ultimately grow their city um, and then the um, machines use the hum the matrix as a construct to keep humans in line so that their energy continues to grow and they continue to grow the society um, we didn't really see too much about how the matrix progresses human society in their minds and versus keeping them um, the same but essentially because of the flaw in the matrix um, as far as the one goes that's kind of why they re have to reboot the matrix and reset everything and start all over again to work out the um, imbalance in the equation um, in the case of the eternals it, they kind of get around that or flip, switch that up a little bit by what I feel like was um, having one of the Eternals know the ultimate plan that they are growing human society or growing the societies and evolution on these various planets and ultimately creating the um, new celestial from the energy of the planet and those beings and the rest of the group is kept in the dark um, but then ultimately there are those or potentially those who um, break free of the plan, learn about the plan, or integrate well into society to the point where they don't want to fulfill their programming essentially. So that all struck a good positive chord with me to set everything up with the grand scheme of the universe and how things are potentially going with the multiverse. I was trying to um, draw a compare. I think this was kind of initially 
brought up in it from a different point of view as far as um, robotic overlords in um, uh, the Loki uh, streaming series on Disney Plus as far as robots controlling what's going on versus um, an actual um, overarching ancient being of immense power so I'm kind of curious to see how they tie that all together if there is a connection if maybe those um, if the TVA was just one part of this control by the Celestials to keep the multiverse portion of things in line whereas the Eternals was more of the front lines to keep um, to start the process and maintain the process going and then you know there's a hierarchy to keep that all in line but that's neither here nor there so ultimately over the course of the film all the characters um as far as Cersei and Icarus and Thena and all of them worked well together I like that they all had their unique personalities to the point where this felt like the MCU version of um the Justice League where Icarus is Superman um I'm not sure who about Sprite, but then um, Makari is um, the Flash, and I'm not. And then uh, I guess uh, Fastos is the Batman character because of all his technological abilities. And, um, I want to say Cersei is potentially, um, or I guess be Cersei and um, Fina, I guess. Maybe even Ajax, I guess, is, are the Wonder Woman character split into three parts. Um, not necessarily, I want to say more of Thena and Cersei, I guess. Ajax is kind of like the mother of the group or like the oracle of the group, I guess, where they, where she gives people the motivation. She's the leader of the group, which she, I mean, she is the leader of the group in the movie, but she's kind of the, uh, basically the oracle of the group, I guess, to continue with the Matrix connection. So that was all, I mean, all of the character interactions generally worked well. I'm not sure how to fit Sprite into all of that, but I generally liked her um, positivity and um, spunkiness and all of that. And then ultimately when we have that interaction between her and Kingo, as far as her being the Tinkerbell kind of character, it finally fit into place how her character fit into the group's dynamic um so that's really all i want to say about that as far as my favorite characters in the film i'm i was kind of biased towards kingo and um karun just because in general i was one of those things where um just having their interactions uh, the whole thing with karun and the video cameras and consistently being able to pull out a video camera or just a regular DSLR it looks like um, it generally just worked in my opinion I like the humor I liked how he appreciated what the Eternals were trying to do where no one else would um, and kill how I want to keep messing up his name but Kingo um, living out his life by becoming a movie den movie director and actor and creating a dynasty of himself where he um got kind of got around um having um people figure out how old he was by playing um being his own um grandfather or great grandfather grandfather father and then himself so i kind of liked um how all of that generally or how he pulled all of that off so in general like most of the other MCU films it's a lot about the characters and how they interact with each other and the story is meant to put them into this um, big dynamic so I'm really curious to see how they pull that all together um, I'm also curious to see or and then of course with the end stinger scenes I was it was interesting to see how Eros is the good um, brother between him and Thanos. So apparently Thanos had a brother, so that was an interesting revelation. So uh, how they, um, whether they have an Eternals 2 or if they um, integrate that into other stuff, whether it's, you know, I mean, I don't know how much stuff you're going to put into Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, but how they... Well, if they create like an Eternals trilogy to um, show the adventures of what they do now after all of these events. So um, in general, that's all going to be 
uh, very intriguing. And then the second spoiler scene with Kit Harrington's character, Dane Whitman, and the voice, which I had to look up after, which was uh, Mahershala Ali, who's going to, I guess, play Blade in the upcoming Blade film or films. So um, I guess he's going to play something called the... Um, Black Knight, I guess. So I, I don't know if he's in, he's um, a vampire or a daywalker like Blade or part of that coven um, or what all that's going to be about. But I am I'm curious to see what all that is about. Um, so I'm also going to go down that rabbit hole to see um, what that was about um, because he was going to tell Gemma Chan's character, Cersei, as far as who he was, what his um, family's history and story was, that he wasn't exactly honest about it. So um, really curious to learn more about his uh, character what and how he fits into all of that. So um, that's really the bulk of that. And the final um, oddity that I'm going to say in the film is having um, Richard Madsen as Icarus and then Kit Harrington as Dane Whitman um, both Game of Thrones characters in the same film, which was interesting. They had minimal interactions with each other, um, which was, I mean, I don't know if, I don't want to really say if it was good or bad. I was indifferent. It was good enough, I guess. And it was almost to the point of being on par with how much interaction they had in Game of Thrones as well, because I think they only had a couple of scenes in season one, I guess. Um, but then it was weird because we have Gemma Chan playing Cersei, and then um Richard Madsen proclaiming his love for her so every time that happened it was hard to get the Game of Thrones connection out of my mind which was probably more me but I'm also thinking there's enough people out there who are Game of Thrones fans who got a little bit of a kick that, um about out of that so um but that's just me so as far as grading the film um I would probably give it a grade of about an A minus I guess 90% I'm still processing some of the information in the films um, I did like the overarching lore as far as um, that main celestial Ar Archon or Ar a Acon something like that um, and how he ultimately or he how he explained the plan how his the whole reverb in his voice was pretty cool so in general it was all a good portrayal so it's one of those things where i'm going to or the mcu has built up trust that it's going to be um paid off in the coming years as far as whatever happens in phase four and potentially phase five i guess um but overall it was a good film there's very little that i could think bad about it um and having slow parts in the film is not necessarily a negative, so I give the film a solid A to A minus. There's very little that I could think bad about it. It was um, entertaining. The funny bits were fun. I, of course, couldn't wait for the part, the line where the, um, I think it was Faustus who said, "You know what doesn't save the world, or what's never saved the world? Your sarcasm." Um, so that was good. All the interactions. Um, Icarus's ultimate potential um, double cross towards the end of the film. Um, uh, the relationship, for example, between Icarus and um, Cersei, and then the um, interactions between Athena, uh, who uh, I guess we you could see that coming as that she was the she was going to be um, Athena, the Greek goddess of war from that period, but um, her interactions with um, not Festus, but uh, Gilgamesh, who was also a great character. He was a very uh, good variation. Uh, he he kind of reminded me of um, what's his name from Doctor Strange, um, the sidekick character who orders a sandwich in Avengers. Um, then the interactions between um, Sprite and Kingo, um, between Druig and uh, Makari. So all, all in all, it's like not only did they accomplish a good team dynamic, but they had good personal relationships between the characters um, broken down into small groups so all in all a good film it goes by um, fast enough they they give uh, it feels like they gave enough time to everything for the story to breathe and progress so not any one part felt like it was short shrifted um, and even if you started to feel like, for example, um, they were spending too much time with Cersei and Icarus, they would bring that back around and give her time with other characters. Same thing with, like, for example, Icarus and Ajax. Um, 
So all in all, a good film to watch. So I do recommend watching it. I give it a solid grade of about an A to A minus, and I would definitely watch it again. So whenever it comes out on streaming, I can't wait to watch it again. There were some points where there were, it was kind of quiet, and there were some kids in the theater, so I kind of missed the, some of the lines. So it would have been nice to have closed captioning. So that's also why I can't wait for it to come out on.、Um, Streaming and potentially see if there's any deleted scenes or any other scenes that may have been might have been cut or anything like that. But overall,、uh, worth a good watch. I can't wait to see how they tie everything together in Phase Four as far as the multiverse, the Celestials, Eternals,、um, Doctor Strange,、uh, Wanda,、uh, Maximoff, and all of that, and even Loki and all of that stuff with the TVA and how all of that's going to fit together. So that's all there is for this particular review. So if you have any questions, comments, feedback, did you like, dislike the film? Did if did you find something was missing? Was there a favorite character or characters from the film that you liked or wanted to see more of? Then you can find me on Twitter at PatelN01. The website is HeadphonesNeil.Reviews for past episodes, subscription links, supporting the show, and all of that good stuff. And of course, as of this recording, I now have now enabled the Twitter tip jar feature on the、uh, on my profile. So if you like this episode or any of the content that I put out, then you can definitely give something back.、Um, I currently enabled options for,、uh, for Bitcoin, Patreon, and Venmo, so you can、um, send something、um, in whichever fit way you feel comfortable.、Um, Through one of those platforms, I'm going to take a look at some of those other stuff, some of the other items there. But、um, since those are already set up, those are、um, definitely the way to go for now. So, thanks for anything you send over. Thanks for your support and subscription and supporting the show and all of that good stuff. But thanks for tuning into this episode. And until next time.